Hey crafters, welcome back. Um, we got a quick one this week. Um, I've got a quick need for my campaign. So we're going to get back to our modern city in our next video. But we're going to have a quick interruption here. Uh, I figure as long as I'm going to make one, I'll, I'll uh, tape it and show you guys how I make it. So in the fantasy campaign I'm running right now, my people are about to go to a haunted dwarven ruin. And they're going to run into... A mystic portal. I'm going to show you how I made this quick, easy, and really, really sharp. Epic your board, epic your game. Let's hit the table. So you do a couple things in preparation. You're going to need um, some pink foam and you're going to get two five inch by five inch blocks and one three inch by five inch block. And then out of one of the five inch blocks, you're going to cut out the middle. It's going to be two inches wide, and two and a half inches tall. Um, and this is going to form your portal. Um, you're also going to cut a strip of the uh, Cheap dollar store foam. Uh, this is three quarters of an inch wide, um, and it's going to need to be long enough because it's going to go around all four. And then I'm doing some fancy corners, so I grabbed two one-inch squares. Okay. Um, I also grabbed an LED, um, an LED tea light, and these are really cheap. I bought a 24 pack of these uh, at Walmart for just a couple bucks. They're pretty cheap, um, but they work perfectly. This plastic case pops right off, um, so it lowers the height. And what I did to just protect this stuff, I just cut like a V out of it, and then hot glued it to the top, and you end up with this for your assembly. So it starts like this, ends like this. So you just pop this ridge off, the whole thing comes out. Uh, you cut this little piece, just use a, just use a pair of... Uh, of uh, heavy duty choppers or a uh, wire cutters or if you have a heavy duty pair of shears and just cut it so it fits along there and there's a little touch of hot glue. Make sure not to hit any of the switches and stuff because this basically keeps your switch in place. But then what you'll do is you'll be able to cut your thing down in size so it's not so big. Um, and that'll let you get a little bit more out of it. Mine is going to have a dwarven kind of theme to it so um, it's going to be very blocky and squarish in the word doors of my world. So we're going to take this and we're going to draw a half inch by one inch brick pattern on here because it's going to be part of a tumble down ruin. I'm going to cut part of it down. And then after we've got that all cut out, which is why I'm just using a scrap. And after we got that all cut out, then we're going to take some tin foil and we're going to just roll it around and give it this and this texture and then we're gonna go further with it. So let me quick uh, texture this all up and uh, cut a central hole where this is gonna go and then cut a smaller hole here for the LED to come up. So I'll do it in pieces so you'll see what we're doing. It's a real quick project, real easy, um, but when you're done, you have something really nice. So let me quick do this. I'll be right back. Okay, so we've glued our three pieces together. And then like we did with our ruins and with our tiles, we've taken a razor knife to cut some texture into our pre-textured foam. And then we took a pencil and we ran it through the grooves we cut to make them look better, score them up. And then we took a razor knife and we chipped some pieces out. We distressed the top, took some chunks out here and there, make it look like a ruins. And then we took those pieces and we're going to reuse them. We grab those little chunks and pieces and just a little bit of PVA glue. I like this tacky glue, Eileen's tacky glue. But I just glue them on and put them in different places to really highlight the fact of the trouble. Then we're going to take some more tacky glue. And uh, we're just going to spread it in a few places because we're going to add some grit to really add the fact that this is a ruins. So we take the glue, we put it in a few spots we want. We take a junky paintbrush get it really wet and uh, we just kind of paint the glue to where we want 
on the base um, our grid to be. So we just paint it out, make it look about where we want. This is not exact science, this is about how you want. We just take our grit. I love cornmeal. It gives you a nice fine grit. It uh, takes paint really well. Uh, and then I just sprinkle it on here or there. A little more than it's going to actually stick to the glue because that's fine when it dries. We'll just shake off the excess. We'll take the rest of that glue that's still on the paintbrush and we'll dip it here and there and sprinkle a little bit more here and there just to really dress up the base of this, mod, this uh, piece. Okay, now that we're done basing this, we're going to take that foam strip we cut in those squares and we're going to put the decoration around the door. So we're going to glue in place and then we'll be right back to take a look at that before we do our prime work. All right, so I've got here the strips put on uh, and I've textured them to look stacks of bricks. I also put the uh, big corners in place and got some large dwarven magical runes in them so this place is set. Once the glue's dry, we're going to give it a coat of the black Mod Podge. Get this on here, give it a nice coat of that, and then we're going to paint it up. All right, so you've got your piece. It's now nice and primed, and we're going to paint it. Before you paint it, it's still dry, you're going to cut plastic to go over these doors, to go inside the doorway for your portal. So, you're going to need to remeasure them. Just measure them and make sure. And then you're going to cut a piece of plastic to fit in there. Um, I used um, the lid. You could use the lid from a bunch of stuff. Um, a clear lid, deli container, whatever. I'm using um, binder cover. So get in there and fit it to side and then dry fit it just to make sure it's going to fit so I'm going to turn this down a little bit but you need two of them so take that and set it aside and then we're going to paint so I start with dark gray from Craftsmart I mean I use Craftsmart because they're cheap and easy I got a palette right here and now the dark gray So we want to give it a solid coat of the gray, but we don't want to wipe out all the black underneath. So we want to make it, this is our base color, cover it thoroughly, but still make it so we can see the black underneath in some spots for detail. I mean, you get the idea. So we'll give this full painting and we'll come back. Okay. So now we're back with a dark gray painted base coat over our black. So now we're going to take another dry brush and we're going to get a medium gray or just a regular gray gray. And we're not doing a dry brush. We're not doing a dry brush. But we are putting it on a bit lighter than the dark gray. And like I said, this isn't a dry brush. This is a little bit firmer than a dry brush, but we're not doing it as thick or as heavy as we we're doing the darker gray. Again, we're just trying to create the illusion of depth and the depth of color. So we're giving it uh, about medium pressure just so we can bring out that gray and the dark gray as a nice contrast. So. All right, so we're going to come back. We're going to do this. And we'll come back when this is dry. Okay, so we've got our gray. Looks good. Two colors. So now lastly, we're going to do our highlighting. We're doing our highlighting with, instead of a white or an ivory, I like to use like a brownish color. So use like a suede. And that's just because it adds a little warmth. So take most of it off so I can see it's close it's off. So what I'm doing here is just a simple dry brush. We're putting just a tiny amount of the paint on the brush. We're wiping most of it off and we're just getting on there. So we just pick up the highlights using very little pressure. So it's just catching the highest points on the foam, the corners, the edges. And uh, with this suede rather than a white, it just adds a little bit of warmth. Uh, I prefer that when I'm trying to make stone. So. 
we go. We got just a little bit of that soap on there, just to add some highlights. Now we're going to add a darker color. Now I'm doing this with the same brush, but I'm using a brick red. And I'm basically doing the same thing with the brick red that I just did with the suede. I'm doing a dry brush, but I'm doing it all over and I'm doing it unevenly just to add some uneven stone colors and stone tones to the rest of the project. Uh, after the wash, it all kind of blends together. It really looks nice. Now we're going to let this dry and then we're going to get the white and then we're going to do our final dry brushing on it. So, and you'll see how that'll bring out everything. So, we'll come back with that. All right. So, now, get our white. And with this white, I'm doing an actual true dry brushing. So, I'm getting most of the paint off the brush and I'm just hitting the very top of the highlights, putting very actual little pressure with the brush catching edges and catching the sides uh, with very little paint on the brush. It just sprinkles a little bit of white here and there um, and it just brightens it up and really kind of blends everything, gets the highlights there, really creates a true illusion of depth that really, really makes a piece just jump out and look very real. You also note that it mutes some of the reds and the browns in that brick red and just kind of blends the whole thing making it look like it's all just regular stone. Um, I've been doing this technique with the red brown in the middle there for a while and it just really with the white on top the taupe in the middle there it really really looks good. At least that's my opinion but you know your mileage might vary. So front and back you can see it really stands out and now we're ready for a wash. So let's get to the next step. All right, so we got this. And now we're gonna do our wash. Now our wash is the same thing we've been using all along, warm water, uh, a little bit of paint, a little bit of surfacant I used on. And then we're just gonna coat the model liberally and let it dry. This is not difficult. Let it dry. All right, so we've got our hot glue gun and extra glue and we've got our two windows or two doors. Now with your glue gun at low temperature you're going to do some swirly patterns uh, just kind of being random swirls all through it and uh, just to make it look all mystical and magical and portal-like, so. There we go. And as they cool, they're going to get hard and they'll be mostly clear and they'll be all swirly. Exactly what you need for a couple of portals. So, just got to let them sit and cool and harden. Once they've cooled and hardened, then you just fit them into place. Now, they might be a little bendy, the heat might warp them a little bit, but that's all right. We're just going to use the hot glue, kind of straighten them as best you can, but you just do the hot glue and run around the seams that they're going to snap into and kind of push them into place. Uh, remember that you want to leave a gap at the bottom for where the light's going to shine up. So, if it doesn't completely fit because it's warped or bent, you can just use a little bit of glue and uh, go back and forth, hold it in place until it cools. Again, you're going to want to do this on the low temp, but uh, you just stretch the glue over a little bit and then if need to, swirl it from the edges and you'll get the effect going. And then we're going to do this the opposite side. Okay. So our coat is dry, we've got our door, we've got everything ready to go. We're just going to call it a door now. So we're going to take a very wet brush, a very, very wet brush, and we're going to take just a splotch of a very neon -y, bright green and a lot of a bright silver, and we're just going to blend the two together. Now with the wetness of the brush, this has the consistency of a little bit thicker than a wash, but not by much. 
Uh, it's just uh, water and green paint and silver, just so that's going to give it a green shivery tone, but so that it's not like solid through. We're going to take a dry sponge brush and we're just going to draw it across. takes off all our excess. So all it's doing is highlighting the nooks and crannies. So again, very watered down. You're doing the same thing on the other side, just like before. Wash-like consistency, wiping off the excess, leaving a silvery green sheen. Really looks good when you're done. All right, then when that dries, you're going to get a shiny clear coat, something very glossy, and cover it with a gloss coat, and then you're done. You just put your light at the bottom. When it's dry and the gloss coat's dry, we'll come back and we'll get a look at our magical portal. And here we see our intrepid heroes wandering up to the magical dwarven portal. Looks good, guys. Um, I might use a brighter LED or a color-changing LED, but what we got here looks good. And uh, it works. It's easy. It's quick. It's something anybody can do. Epic your table. Epic your game. Uh, we'll see the table next time, guys. Thanks so much. Subscribe, like, do what you can. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much.